Ten years ago, I moved to Chaswell. I saw Hindus for the first time in my life and I was spellbound by their culture and tradition. Call it fate or destiny. But not long after that, I found myself working as a DJ on a Hindu radio station. I'm Romeo Kongo, and this was my gateway into Hinduism, more specifically the festival of Ganesha Chaturthi. I had a persistent fan that always invited me to a temple in Pretoria. She was a long-distance caller who slowly became a regular on the show. Her enthusiasm and love for her traditions grew on me and eventually I decided to accept her invitation. After an overnight trip, I reached the bus station in Pretoria and met Shanti for the first time in person. Right then, I knew that I was set for the journey of a lifetime. Celebrating the birth of Lord Ganesha. Festival is called Ganesha Chaturthi, remember? Yes. We so, headed along a dusty road to Pretoria's outskirts in rural southwest Pretoria. I felt apprehensive as we moved away from civilization and wondered what type of temple would lie in these farmlands. Shanti seemed confident, however, and consistently reassured me that I would be pleasantly surprised and surprised. I was. So I'm going to be introducing you to some of the members we're going to be working with over the weekend, uh, Romeo, with the Clay Ganeshas. Okay. So remember our greeting is Swami Sharana Mayapa, meaning at your feet is our refuge, O Lord. Ayapa. So, give it a try. We practice. Swami Ye Sharanam Ayapa. That's it. That's exactly it. Swami Ye Sharanam Ayapa. Swami Ye Sharanam Ayapa. I want to introduce you guys to Romeo. Hi, Romeo. He's going to be helping us and learning about Ganesha over the weekend. So, Romeo, there's Priya, Divesh, Larissa, Tiroshan, and Bhuvaneshwari. Okay. Swami Ye Sharanam Ayapa. Swami Ye Sharanam Ayapa. They are so beautiful, such details. How do you make them? Well, it's actually quite exciting, Romeo. Mm -hmm. We take the clay from the river that runs through the temple here. So we know that that's a formless God expressed in nature. We then use that mixed with some water, which represents a purity. We take out all of the little bits of dirt and grass that we find in that clay. And then once it's refined, mix it with the water and mold it into these beautiful clay Ganeshas that you see. Before we present these Ganeshas to our devotees, we first make them look really beautiful so that when the devotee comes to collect their Ganeshas, 
they can take him home and start worshiping him. There's such a cool vibe going on here and everyone they're doing their duties with love. They're getting their, their hands dirty and they're so meditative. I'm loving the atmosphere here. I'm enjoying this. It's so nice to experience this side which you really never get to see. As I engage in the cleanup at the temple, I started to see how this too was an act of worship. Be it the part of devotion, of knowledge, or of service, all are there to connect you to the divine. Now, tell me about the story of uh, worshiping Ganesha. A tree I purchased from Ganesha Chuduti is, is our largest festival. And, and we are so fortunate to have devotees that travel far and wide devotees from Durban, from Cape Town, from Port Elizabeth. Um, you would find that Indians have, have settled in various parts of the world. Um, but the element that's common to, to the Indian diaspora is, is the religion and the culture. You've seen the image of Lord Ganesha, right? Yes, you have. Yes, you know. And yeah, and at, to some it may seem rather absurd or at times funny or comical. Mm -hmm. Because you see this, this huge personality um, riding on a small rat. Yes. I mean, so that doesn't make sense. I mean, how can a small rat carry a big personality? Yes. But I think if we focus on, on the literal, we lose the essence of what is being taught in that image. And then I bring it back to desire. So in Hindu mythology, the rat represents the desire. By Ganesha riding on um, the rat, he's basically telling us that we should learn to control our desires. And if we can control our desires, life becomes beautiful, truly beautiful. I learned so much from Kuban and I began to appreciate the faith with deeper understanding. This grew when I witnessed Lord Ganesha being welcomed home. So Romeo, once we bring our Ganesha home, then for the 10 days that he is at home with us, every day we offer some prayers or puja to this clay Ganesha. So you can just follow what I say, and I'm going to explain to you what we're doing. So the most important thing to remember is whenever we pray, we don't pray in asking for something. We pray in gratitude for what we have already received. So the first thing we do is that everything that we're going to offer represents one of the five elements that this whole world is made up of, that our bodies are made up of. So that's everything that we have is symbolic of those five elements, right? we have offered this to the Lord, we take this and bring it to our eyes where we want them, all this enlightenment of divinity to enter into our minds. Okay. We want to be able to look forward, like bringing it up to our eyes, where also we believe the third eye or Jnanakan, the eye of knowledge, Jnanam is knowledge, sits here between our two physical eyes. We bring that divine light to that that position of, of, on our eyes in praying to the Lord that may this divine knowledge, may this enlightenment that I will make an effort to, to, to get in my life, may that lead me forward 
with all positivity and your grace. These five elements that of ether, air, fire, water and earth seem so natural in worship. It brought a deeper understanding to the rituals too. Now that God has a form, he was real in a way. The rituals were a way to relate to him. Like the regular satsangs where devotional songs brought a connection and the spiritual talks brought meaning. So while you were talking, I tried to absorb in as much as I could. Now, you spoke about uh, devotees' connection to God and how different it is. Will you uh, elaborate? Hinduism is not one of that um, religions that is a one jacket fits all. We understand the different types of human beings that are there, those that are intellectually, um, say, evolved, those that are emotionally evolved, and those that are physically involved. So even amongst the pathways to reach God, we have these three pathways that we can attain God realization and so on. That was my next question. Those three parts, what, are the, what do you mean? What are the three parts? There are three parts, basically. You know, our union with God is called yoga. So if you had one uh, word that you wanted to um, act as a synonym for what religion was, religion comes from two words, religari, which means to tie you back to your belonging or to once where you belong to. Ri means to do again. Ligari means to tie. So if you want to tie back to where you were once attached to, you follow a religion. In Hinduism, yoga means exactly the same. Yoga means to yoke yourself to that which you were, or where you originally came from. So we have these three pathways. So there's a pathway called karma yoga, where karma means action, and those people who are physically endowed perform action. And they perform action and reach God. The other one is called bhakti yoga. Bhakti means my emotional attachment to God, my love for God. So love stems from this inner being of a human being where he loves to show an expression to God. He loves to worship. He loves to sing God's praises. Whereas compared to the person who did karma yoga, he just wanted to do action. He wanted to do work uh, for people and for humanity. Whereas the other individual, the bhakti yoga, he will sit in a temple. He will chant the praises of God. He will pour out his love in terms of ritual worship and so on. Then we find those people who are intellectually inclined. They will follow a path called Jnana Yoga because Jnana means the path of wisdom and knowledge. So those people who can analyze, can think and can delve deep into the how the world was started. What is my relationship with this ultimate uh, um, reality? Those people require knowledge and wisdom. So there are human beings that are so inclined, they follow Jnana Yoga. Those people that are emotionally inclined, follow Bhakti Yoga. Those people who are physically inclined, follow Kaya Yoga. Oh, I'm like blown away. I, I, I can listen to you the whole night and the whole day. But thank you for sharing all the information with us. Thank you so much. And um, I'll come back here. I feel like I've been having a life lesson here on the grounds of this temple. And I can't wait to continue with this journey with Shanti and worship Ganesha and learn more as well. Om Sarvesham Shasti Bhavattu Shanti Bhavattu Sarvesham Just as the water in a river is always fresh, always new, I felt renewed through this knowledge and felt a deeper understanding wash over me. Shanti, you are so lucky you'll have uh, uh, the river flowing just next to the temple and uh, there's some calmness here. The only thing you hear is the river flowing. It's beautiful. Now, I know in Hindu, there is uh, something about water. Water plays an important role. It's truly a wonderful question because Lord Ganesha is the Lord of all obstacles. And how the rivers are related to that? Have you seen a river that stops flowing because there's a rock or something in its way? No, it just goes either around it or over it. Find some way for that water to continue flowing. Like that, we learn that in life we're always going to face 
some kind of challenge, something that prevents us from getting to that goal that we want to. But with everything that Lord Ganesha teaches us, like a good memory, listening well, that we should gain knowledge, that we should control our desires, we will be able to overcome those obstacles, much like the river always finds a way to continue flowing in and around anything that comes into its path. I just came to the temple a couple of days ago and meeting my Shanti from Pretoria, seeing her busy up and down, she is involved in the temple itself and she's involved much in this uh, Ganesha Chaturthi celebration. So spending time with her made me realize her passion about the temple and her passion about the religion and worshipping Ganesha as well. Romeo, yes, someone you have to meet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Shanti. This is my cousin Bhavani. Bhavani, this is Romeo who's visiting our Chetram and he's going to be here for our Ganesha Chaduti celebration. Oh, that's wonderful. Samia Sharanam. Samia Sharanam Ayava. Oh, you learned the greeting already. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. I feel welcome, yeah. And I can't, I can't get over how beautiful the structure is. I've noticed with Hindus, they love to feed God. Why? Well, Romeo, if you think about um, the relationship that somebody has with any God, um, we are devoted to that God. And when we look at devotion, it's a way that we express our love, and not only our love, but our gratitude for everything that we have. I understand uh, Modak is God's, is Ganesha's favorite offering. Can you tell me more about Modak? Okay, so Modak or Modagam, um, Modagam. is a fruit, it, it's actually both words you okay. can say is Modak or Modagam, it's just in different languages. Mm -hmm. So we say it, uh, that, that is Ganesha's favorite type of sweet. And it is um, a rice flower shell that is then has a bit of sweet, um, sort of coconut and dried fruit and nuts in it. And it's actually like a little bundle and it resembles like a fig that you bundle and you steam or you fry it and then you offer it to the, to the Lord. If you think about our lives, it's not just all happiness or it's not just all sadness or trying times. But what we are meant to do is develop um, resiliency, develop good qualities so that hard shell then needs to be broken in order for the sweetness to, to uh, for you to taste the sweetness, for instance. So, no, not yet. We have to first offer to Lord Ganesha and get his blessings. Okay. Okay. I always marveled at the color and hive of activity that surrounded Hindu festivals, though not really understanding what it all meant. Dr. Kolopen handed me a book that gave me a deeper insight into the inner significance of Hindu practices, and I was amazed at how detailed its symbolism is. Romeo, cultivation still reading this book? Yeah, I'm learning so much, girl. And uh, knowledge is power, as you know. No, definitely it is. But food also gives us power, so why don't we go get some food? I think I need food now. Let's Real go food. <laughs> Thank you. Let's <laughs> go. But this book is very, very nice. I'm, I'm glad, glad you're enjoying it. You I'm can learn a lot. During this journey, there are many opportunities for spiritual rejuvenation to move from the otherwise mundane world into one of sublime bliss. 
There are various ways and festivals are indeed there for a purpose, one of which serves as a reminder to the devotee about the power of love and devotion, about deep faith and about using this golden opportunity to connect with the divine. It's the last day of Ganesha Chaturthi festival here at the temple and the atmosphere is exhilarating. I'm going to join Shanti. found that this peculiar form of God, with his elephant head and pot belly, is essentially a symbol of universal oneness. He is accepted by Hindus of different sects. He is worshipped as the form and the formless, and he is loved beyond measure. For me, he is a symbol of peace and tolerance. <laughs> develop a little sadvik tendencies to listen Shravanam. That's why we worship Ganesh. He has such beautiful ears. We want to develop the memory of Ganesh, memory of an elephant. When we do that, we will transcend our animality and we will become removers of our own obstacles. Hinduism teaches us that there is no obstacle outside of you. You are the biggest obstacle to all your problems. Anybody who has encountered a death in a family or a death of a loved one would know that time is not guaranteed to any of us. And for all of us, life is transient. The one element that remains permanent is what we leave behind. And we all have this opportunity, being involved and linked to Sri Aipachetran, to leave behind a legacy that will serve generations to come. Through the wisdom he imparts, we can peel away at the layers that we pile on and eventually begin to see ourselves as children of one God. At the end of this journey, from the formless to the form and back into the formless, just like the sand that made many forms of Ganesha and the many forms that dissolved back into sand, we too are the many from the one and will dissolve back from the many into the one. A glorious birthday celebration drawing into an end with so many lessons. My journey and the three parts becoming into one. Ganesha Chaturthi. Ganesha Chaturthi.